Welcome back. In the last video, I was talking about if I was going to sleeve the cylinder or plate it myself, try that, or send it out for plating. I had a spare cylinder which was not good enough for, um, for getting it plated myself. The bore had some troubles, but it's probably good enough for a sleeve. I've sent that out to Stefan Svartz SM Tuning. Check him out on Instagram. Years ago, he's made a pretty brilliant cylinder. Machined, just like Mark Atkinson has done with his, uh, his cylinders. He's machined it in pieces to avoid having to use a 5-axis machine and to, to be able to make the transfers and the exhaust port and all that. Brilliant stuff. And he's gonna bore it out and machine a sleeve, a tapered sleeve. It will be easy to just push it out again. There's been an overwhelming amount of people mailing me and offering to help, so thank you guys. And uh, it's such a surreal situation having to choose from, like choose who's gonna help me with this. There will be other projects and uh, I will sure need help later. There's a few mails I haven't gotten to yet, so hang in there, hang in there. O-rings have arrived, finally, and also the reed material, which means we can uh, make new reeds for this block, which is the one supposed to be there, not the one I uh, hacked on there. And my head is now O-ringed, we can run water, even though it will be a while until we can try it again. Started thinking about casting again. I've had two main issues. First one is plaster intrusion into the 3D printed models. They're not sealed good enough, you can see it here. One problem. The second problem is getting that plaster out of there. You can see this, these two, that window there, I put that in there to be able to scrape the plaster out or um, blast it out with high pressure water. I think I found a solution. Ammonium bicarbonate. Hoon, salt in Norwegian. It's a uh, fairly potent stuff and uh, it's, it shouldn't cause too much uh, damage to the aluminium but it should dissolve the plaster. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna do a little test with this stuff and see if it works. If it does I can be, won't have to put in the inspection uh, holes and I can also be more refined with the water jacket. Make some like guides to get the water where I want it. I'm gonna do that test and try stripping the plating and some more. By the way, my YouTube channel has, uh, it's, things are going exceedingly well lately. And that dream of doing this full time, it's not so far-fetched anymore. So I just want to thank you for watching and sharing my videos and stuff. And thank you for supporting me on Patreon. If I can do this full time, I can really get stuff going. Like imagine the difference between two hours a couple of times a week and five days a week, eight hours. Imagine the difference. Thank you guys. Checking with a magnet, it doesn't seem like that black gray goo is steel, so probably aluminium, probably the plating and the piston. I know Mark changed his pistons, he's running kind of the same design. I know he changed the taper, I think the taper was too steep and this might be the case in, uh, in my case too, but um, mostly, um, mostly my plating, which we're gonna do something about now.
I'm gonna strip the nickel with um, definitely not nitric acid. Nitric acid, no. <coughs> Uh, definitely not nitric acid fumes are uh, not the most healthy thing to breed. My exhaust extraction fan is really noisy so I think I'll just set it in the room next door here with the door open and um, wouldn't have been a big deal except I'm filming stuff so uh, we'll put it in the room next door here and uh, leave the door to the outside open and uh, check on it regularly. Regularly. While waiting for our chemical processes to do their thing, let's cut some reeds. I'm not going to install this yet, I'm going to wait until we have the engine running again and uh, just to not introduce another variable. I know it runs with this valve, so unlike me, I know. Seems like it's working. It's, um, the plaster is starting to soften up here in places. So we'll just have to keep it going. Another thing this ammonium bicarbonate is good for is stripping paint because I left my stirring stick on the paint here and it's just peeling off. So ammonium bicarbonate, perfect for stripping paint. been an hour had to leave it in there a little bit more I need the plating to be completely stripped for the new plating to uh, to bite I don't want to leave it for too long because then the aluminium will start suffering there's really nothing to do but wait now see if that plaster removal process works and to wait for the plating to strip I could clean up the place but that's boring I thought I'd do a little rundown of the case here the intake I've been running up until now this intake with a carb that is the primary intake with a reed valve and that's for starting and bringing it up to to rpm warm up stuff like that then this secondary intake will take over and it's going to be tuned so imagine um, a long pipe like this approximately 130 millimeters long and that's to tune the intake for the volume in the crankcase and 
the volume in the crankcase is exceedingly large for uh, 50 cc it's uh, 490 cc that gives a primary compression of 1 to 1.17 i think so that's that's low it might be too low there might be too much volume in here the reason i've gone for too much volume is because if you look in there it's it's kind of difficult to difficult to um, to determine where that intake pipe start, stops and where the case starts when it's open and uh, it will there will be a slide valve here uh, a thin slide valve I um, where did I put that thing here's my uh, temporary solution and I might actually try running it with this because uh, PVC is resistant to gasoline and also methanol and nitromethane so it shouldn't be a problem and uh, what's nice about this valve is it has rubber seals that seal well so when it's closed it is closed it seals and um, it's kind of I'm not quite sure if um, if it will seal good enough with just a steel thin steel valve and um, and uh, aluminium could use cork like in um, let's see if I can find it here's a Suzuki GP100 rotary valve cover and it is lined with a cork material probably to seal better when um, if there's excessive clearance so um, maybe a cork material could be could be suitable for a slide valve if bare aluminium doesn't work on a rotary valve it works fine with just bare aluminium I've been running the the SPX engine that's just bare aluminium and um, there's about 0.2 millimeters clearance for the valve so probably it won't be a problem anyways where were we primary intake is uh, on gasoline a carb the secondary has injectors here and here so I will use one injector for methanol and nitromethane the second injector is meant for pure nitromethane difficult to get a hold of in Norway so I have a plan not stripped yet have to wait a little bit more I'll show you my plating setup and tell you what it's uh, what it's made up of so here is uh, my first step or actually this is the first step acetone start by cleaning the castings inside in the kitchen sink with normal detergent and just get it as clean as possible there then I do a dip in uh, acetone then I heat up this uh, alkaline cleaning solution in this heater and I do a dip there I have this uh, little let's see here can't remember the times I've used but I have it written down uh, alkaline cleaner five minutes so I'll do that and then I'll rinse in uh, distilled water it's time for the the nastiest of all the steps and that is this acid solution which is uh, let's say it contains uh, fluor ions in solution and that's not something you want to play with so that's the nastiest of all this stuff here it's needed to get the oxide layer stripped from aluminium with high silicon content so that's why it's there so on to then rinse in distilled water then it's on to this syncate step syncate is uh, zinc oxide and um, and um, you know that stuff you use for cleaning your plumbing I can't believe I forgot the name now, but anyways, it's uh, zinc oxide and, and that stuff, so it's really alkaline. So the acid strips the oxide layer, this puts a layer of zinc in place of the oxide layer, and I do this two times. Then it's uh, rinse and onto a neutral nickel strike for five minutes. That's just a thin layer and it's there for, uh, for the actual nickel boron nitride silicon carbide step to stick properly. So here's the actual plating, the nickel seal. And it's, uh, I think I used four hours last time and it produced about, I think 50, 60 microns. So I have to do it for longer. Make the bore a little bit larger and do that for uh, a little bit longer to get a, or even use higher voltage. I can't remember exactly what I used last time, but I think I can go a little bit higher without getting like burnt spots. This is the stuff I'm using in there. It's a uh, five micron hexagonal boron nitride powder. 
end. So that's what I used for the first plating. It's too soft, should have used cubic boron nitride, which is diamond, diamond hardness. But now I've mixed in some, you can't really see it in there, but it's, uh, it's one micron silicon carbide powder. And so now it should be hard. There's some crud here, but uh, when I get the circulation going again and the heat, I don't think it will be a problem at all. That boron nitride is uh, foaming a lot, so kind of annoying, but it worked last time. And now with the silicon carbide, I think it will be fairly successful. All these tanks have been sealed since last time I, uh, I plated, so should be good. Here's the power supply. And here's the anode, and that's mounted in the in the middle of the bar to get an even, like even current distribution. Titanium wire that's uh, pretty much inert in the nickel bath. Let's check the plate stripping. It's getting late. I might actually have to leave this overnight because uh, I had to go to bed and go to work tomorrow. I'll go in and edit video and uh, and maybe this is not the end. Maybe you will see a stripped cylinder. Otherwise, see you next time. I had to leave it overnight. Thanks for watching.